Oi! Hi there, welcome to this channel. My name is Alexander and in this channel we talk about art, psychology and drawing. And today I want to show you guys how to draw like one of my favorite artists, Katsuya Terada. I came in contact with Katsuya's work via Kim Young-gi. They often work together and they've published a book. And although I really love Kim Young-gi's work, I'm mesmerized by Katsuya's work because he really knows how to create a punch in his illustrations. You know, there's such a high contrast. The stuff that he brings together makes no sense, but still he makes it work together in the style that he's using. And that's just so freaking amazing. Although they seem friends and work together on drawings, they have a different focus in their art pieces. Kim Young-gi is mainly focused on perspective, while Katsuya Terada is mainly focused on form. And we can see that by looking at these art pieces. If we look at this one by, by Kim, you can actually see that, you know, it's very clear where the perspective is, how the grid is working. That's his thing. But if we look at Katsuya, I don't know what the perspective is, but it's very clear what the form of these objects is. For example, this color thingy, you, know, you can really see that it has this kind of form. He does that by, you know, drawing these lines and really creating a shading in the objects. Now you might be wondering, what is the difference between perspective and form? Perspective has to do with a horizon line and vanishing points. And form is what's going on with the objects. Now, of course, there's an overlap between the objects and the space they live in. In other words, the perspective grid. But you don't have to be a master in perspective before you can work a bit on your form. Form can be a great asset to your bag of skills as an artist, as you can see with Katsuya. To create form, Katsuya uses contour lines and cross contour lines. Now, let me explain you what the difference is between these two by taking apart from this drawing. Let's take this plug. Now, the blue represents the contour lines and the yellow are the cross contour lines. That are the lines that go over the objects to really give its form. Now, why isn't he doing these kinds of lines, right? Why is the direction like this? That's because if he uses this direction, then the form of the objects, which is round, isn't really explained, right? So he really plays with the direction of the lines to give it more form, which is also visible on this bird because you could think that the roundness of the bird is like this so why isn't he using lines that are going to go in this direction well that's because the feathers of a bird are aerodynamic so he really goes over the he really emphasize that on this one now contour lines are more used to explain the silhouette of an object so for example this line is a contour line and this one as well this one and this one and this and this and this but all these lines here are cross contour lines and he really uses different type of lines so either thick lines over here and very close together to really emphasize on the shading but over here they're more far apart they're also pretty long while over here they're pretty short and here again here he uses hatching and that's how he creates a lot of contrast in his drawings let's have a look on how to draw like katsuya or even better draw with form so if you want to be able to draw like katsuya the only thing you have to really think about is the form of the object and really think about how are the contour lines going over the object now a third might seem simple to draw but it's actually a spiraling cylinder so to make it easy for yourself is start simple start with a cylinder or a box and then add the contour lines over it and really think about where is the light source where the light source is hitting the object that's where you just leave it white and on the other hand you're just increasing the amount of lines and the thickness of those lines and that's how you create form if you want to develop your form drawing skills, then I would say head over to my Gumroad video where I've got a workout video of an hour and a half in which we do exercises together. And then I go a little bit more in depth about how this works and how you can really accentuate the form in your drawings. Although Kim is focused on perspective and Katsuya is focused on form, they both have an enormous control over their line art. If you look closely at these art pieces, you can see that both of them have such control over their line. For example, there's so much variety in this art piece. There are thicker straight lines, but also more curved lines. And then there's a lot of black and then here's a lot of white. And here he leaves some space open to create more depth. While here the variety is more in the length of the lines, the shading or the texture, right? This line is just really going all the way to the bottom. While over here, he's doing a lot of smaller lines to create 
more texture. And over here, there's no texture. And also on the face, there's no texture. Both of these artists are great with line. But if there's one artist who is the godfather of comic art and line art, that's Mobius. As you can see, he is also such a great artist with his line art. I know actually that Katsuya is highly inspired by Mobius. And, and there's some overlap you can see in there because the use of organic forms that Mobius is using over here is also very visible in here. For example, in the hair or in the cords or all that stuff. Another thing we can see if we just take out the, the blue lines is that although they all have a lot of control over their line art, there is a big difference. And and the difference is the tools that they are using. For example, Katsuya Terada is known for using thick black markers. So his lines are overall pretty thick. Kim Young Gi is known for using a pencil brush pen. And Mobius, because his lines are a little bit thinner and you know more refined work that he's doing, it seems like he's using like a, a fine liner or something. So the tools you are using, the tools you like or prefer to work with, also have a great effect on the style that you eventually communicate. But I wouldn't be too concerned about style. I know that style is a pretty sensitive subject for a lot of beginning artists. At least it was for me when I was a beginning artist. Whenever I got the question, hey, what's your style? I would feel very nervous about answering that because I wasn't sure how to answer it. But now I understand that style is not something that becomes clear in a day. It really takes time to develop it. There's a free video on my Gumroad which goes a little bit deeper into the concept of style. So if you wanna know, check it out, link in description. But let's have a look at developing yourself as an artist from a skill perspective. Now, you can imagine that putting more time and effort and doing exercises makes you a better artist. So you start off as a novice, then become advanced, and eventually you'll become a master. Now, like we've seen before, both Katsuya Terada and Kim Young Gi are masters in line control. So you can imagine that they've spent a lot of time doing exercises focused on line control. Now, next to that, Kim Young Gi has spent a lot of time perfecting his perspective, and Katsuya Terada has focused on form. If your ambition is to become an advanced artist, you'll need to have somewhat of an understanding of all of these concepts. But if you want to become a master artist, you can just pick one of these concepts and fully focus on that. Now, a very simple exercise that you can do to increase your line control is ghosting. And I don't mean ghosting your ex. I mean ghosting by putting down some dots like this and then really trying to put a line over there, a confident line. And the whole goal of this is not to go from one dot to the other, so do this. No, it's really to go through the dots. And you'll see that your lines are really straight on. It also means drawing from your shoulder instead of with your hand or fingers. A lot of people that are drawing lines, they do something like this. So they are more focused on the middle section of the line instead of the whole of the line. So moving it from one point to the other. These kinds of boxes or lines are not really confident because they're put down very fast. They're not thought out. Instead, try to slow down and try to really think about where is this line going? What is the angle of the line? So the first line I drew, this one, let's try to do it with a more slowed down approach. I'm ghosting, so I'm thinking about these two dots, putting them here. I'm ghosting and then I'm putting them down. And then I move over to the next one, aiming for the next section, putting it down. Now what you'll see if you do this is that not only your lines become more confident, but also the whole object that you're drawing feels more confident. When you're doing this exercise, try to keep the paper still and make straight lines in different angles. Ghost before you make a mark. Apart from straight lines, you can also make curved lines. Make marks, hover over the paper, and feel confident before you make the line. Besides being a master artist and being very skilled in form, Katsuya Terada is known for doing live drawing. Now you can spend hours developing a skill as form or perspective, 
but you're never going to feel 100% confident, especially when you're doing live drawing. Now I did a couple of live drawings in front of 300 people. On the one hand, it's feeling very frightening, but on the other hand, it's feeling very empowering and very challenging because you're standing there and you're trying to make a drawing in front of all these people while they're watching what you're doing with your pen. Now, I would be lying if I wouldn't have sweat all over the place. It's a big challenge, but afterwards you'll always receive a warm applause from the people. And that's because you as an artist know a lot more about drawing and art than you might think you know. Because for the one hand, you're watching a video like this. So you know about the concept like line control, shading, form, perspective, but the average audience doesn't know what these things are. So the fact that you're standing there and that you're making a live drawing for them is already like awesome to see. So whenever you get the chance to do live drawing, I would say go for it. If you enjoyed this video, then stay tuned for the new video in which I'm going to show you how to draw the torso. But for now, I want to thank you for watching and have an awesome day. Bye bye.